I, thank you very much, Ngugi. You know, I met Ngugi uh, last year, a year ago, and I met him in Bondo, in Bondo town. So I know people have been asking, how did Ngugi become a senator all of a sudden? You have to come to Bondo. <laughs> um, Dad, I know you don't like protocols, so today I'll just call you Baba. My name is Winnie Imga the Koth Juma Neema Odinga, but you can call me Kazi. Or oh, in Kijanua, they call me Chogo, which is Kitinda Mimba. Uh, Baba ni meskia watu wakisema ati yowezi bonga sheng. That we've been treating in sheng na Baba wezi bonga sheng. But hini mse wa Kanairo. Hini mse wa Nairobi. Yeah? Wale wengine ni wakukam. Yeah? Yeah? Aku kuja wapa na gari ya matanga ama barua ya chief. Yeah? So, wale wengine Nairobi kuna wenyewe, wale wengine wanaweza kutuuzia kuku ama something like that, but na Nairobi ni yetu. Um, I was asked to speak about uh, my father, to tell a story that can uh, bring out who he is as a person. So when I was thinking about it, I was wondering what story could I really talk about? And uh, I try to remember the first, the first memory I have of my father, which I'm going to tell you about today. Um, you know, in our house, we have two sets of siblings. And uh, my siblings have their own story, which is a very deep and sad story. Um, so I will not speak about it today because it's not my story to tell. Um, I remember when I was younger, he was always working. He was always working and he would always come home late around quarter to 11 and he would leave by 6 in the morning. So uh, I remember wanting to wait for him. And mama would have told me to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And those days I used to share a room with my brother and my sister. And uh, our rooms were facing the gate. So when the car would come, I would get out of bed and I would rush downstairs and open the door. But the thing, the key was used to be put so high up. So I used to take a broom and hit the key until mama tied for me a rope where I could reach the key. So I would open the door. And when you open the door, I would see him there with a briefcase, his newspapers, and a big phone. And when you'd see me, you would get so excited. He used to pick me up, he'd put me on his shoulders, and we would go around the sitting room. And he used to sing this uh, nursery rhyme. It was in Dulu. I don't remember the words. But I remember it was about a donkey. And it would go something like that. Then at the end would go, hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. And he used to do that, hee-haw. And we would collapse on the chair. Then uh, he would sit on the chair, I would go down quickly, I'd untie his shoes, take his shoes to the door, take the briefcase to the room with the phone, put it on the charger. I walk into the room, mama is asking me why I'm still awake. Then I'd run downstairs, we'd watch the 11 o'clock news and see you next time. So next time was not a very, it wasn't today, tomorrow, whatever, it was long periods of time. So one day I asked him, where do you go? Why do you always come so late? What do you do? And uh, he told me, I'm going to show you where I go. So that time, it was about 97, we went to, for an NDP rally. And uh, that was the time of Tinga. And he put me on the tractor he was on. And as the tractor was driving through, people were screaming and, you know, excited, and I got so afraid. And he told me, don't be afraid, these are your people. And I asked him, what do you mean my people? And he said, no, 
this is your family. And he said that if you live a good life, then they must live better than you. And if you think, <laughs> thank you. If you think you deserve the best, then they deserve better. And if you think, if you walk around thinking you deserve the world, then you must give them the universe. And uh, that, that, that story really has always stuck with me. Uh, because it finally made sense where he was, where he's been going, and um, it really brought out the issue that he is a fighter. So I, am, I hope that tells you what sort of person this is. He's a fighter. If you want something, you have to fight for it. Um, you know, I see young people complaining today about Kenya, but Kenya cannot be better if we do not fight for it. There's nobody who's going to make Kenya better for you. We're the ones to fight for it. So next year in 2022, there's going to be two outcomes. Either something very good will happen or something terribly bad will happen. And so you have to get up and fight against those forces. Um, in life, when we talk about things, there's nobody who's going to give anything to you.